Hey Jan here, welcome back to Coding with Jan. And if you're watching this, chances are very good that at some point you have already heard about Google Analytics, maybe the Google Tag Manager, Google Ads or Google AdWords remarketing tags, uh, Google Shopping or the Google Merchant Center. And if you're anything like me, and especially if you're just starting out, this might be very confusing at first. So here's my attempt to give you the most comprehensive, crispy clear overview, spoken in almost accent-free English, just like you used to hear it from me. And the goal is that by the end of this video, you will have a very good understanding on what each of these tools is meant to do, how and when they interact together, which ones you might want to use in order to grow your e-commerce business, and maybe most important, how they all integrate within Shopify. So without further ado, I would say let's get started. Now let's begin today's journey by taking a look at Google Shopping. And let's suppose someone is searching anything specific on Google, like how to sell on Google. Then for many website owners, this would be a great opportunity to have a piece of content in place that ranks as high as possible in the search results, because so they might be able to redirect a fraction of that search traffic directly to their page for free. Traditionally, text-based content would rank best, and that could be a blog article, for instance, with relevant keywords. And the striving for the highest position would be known as search engine optimization, or in short, SEO. I'm sure you heard of this before. Now, over the last few years, user behavior has changed dramatically online. And nowadays, people are searching anything online. They search for questions, for images, for videos, for traffic routes, uh, for shopping and online products. And this is exactly where you come into play. So for example, if I search for new sneakers online, I will not only be presented with text-based search results, but also with results from the Google Shopping feed. And these are actually paid advertisements, but once you switch over to the Google Shopping tab, this is where you can actually get your products listed for free. And if I click on one of these listings, like this one for example, it would take me to a Shopify product page. And I know it's a Shopify product page because coincidentally it was built by the agency I'm currently working at. Uh, but the main takeaway here is that Google Shopping is a search engine for products. Now, how do you get your products listed on Google Shopping? First of all, you will have to create a Google Merchant Center account. It's completely for free to set up. And in here, you could either add your products one by one manually. Uh, it kind of looks like the Shopify backend. You have to enter a product title, a product price, uh, upload images, and so on and so forth. Or what might be an even better way is adding the Google channel to your Shopify store. And you can do that directly from the Shopify app store. Now, once you have the sales channel installed, you could navigate there directly from your Shopify admin dashboard. And down here, you can select all the different products that you want to get listed on Google Shopping. And the app would then go ahead and synchronize your product data from your store with your Google Merchant account automatically. Quick side note here, as these type of sales channels are getting more and more popular. So for instance, you could do the same thing with eBay listings. So this sales channel would pull your product data and list them on eBay. And in the agency I'm working at, we are currently building a similar integration for Idealo, which is arguably the largest price comparison site here in Germany with an estimated 46 million visitors per month. So that might be another sales channel to consider soon. I'm super excited for the release and I'd be happy to give you an update on that. All right, next on my list, we have Google Analytics. And this is probably the software where most of you already have a vague idea on what it does. But let's cover the most important points very quick. So the basic setup is very simple. You just create an analytics account and then from your admin settings, you go to property settings Then you grab your tracking ID and copy it to your Shopify admin dashboard. You can navigate to preferences where you would have the Google analytics section and then you can paste your ID right here, save everything. And then you also want to make sure to set the checkbox for enhanced e-commerce. I will explain to you what it does in a minute Then you save it. Then you would go back to your Google admin settings. And in the view column, you can select e-commerce settings and you would enable e-commerce setting and the enhanced e-commerce reporting and save everything. Now, if you want to test your integration on the front end, you can use a Chrome extension called Google Tech Assistant. And once you have that installed, you would be able to see all the active tracking snippets. And here you can see I have Google Analytics active and that's the ID I just copied from my um, Google admin dashboard. And you can see that it recorded the page view request so it's just working fine. From now on, Google will collect data all around user interactions and behavior on your site. So this will help to understand the true customer journey. And it will also help to determine the most effective marketing channels so that you can allocate your resources, which are namely time and money accordingly. The default setup would already include metrics on the amount of page views, 
or the time that is spent per page. And it will also give you some data on customer acquisition, like where does your traffic come from uh, and many more things. But I'm by no means a Google Analytics expert uh, because to me as a developer, it's more important to understand what these things should do and how they integrate from a technical point of view. But actually using these tools would, um, would be the job of an analyst or a digital marketer. Besides the default setup, I also just recommended that you enable the e-commerce reporting and this will give you additional data on what kind of products have been sold and how much revenue you have generated and how many transactions you have had. Uh, and then I also recommended to enable the enhanced e-commerce reporting and this will give you further data on what kind of marketing and coupon codes have been used or additional product attributes like how many impressions every product had. Now, once you get familiar with Google Analytics, I also recommend diving a bit deeper and learning about Google Analytics goals and Google Analytics custom events. Um, I will link a very good article that explains both in the video description. But in short, with Google Analytics goals, you will be able to report on how well your site fulfills the main target objectives like getting sales or getting newsletter signups. And then you will even be able to break these goals down into the funnels. And this will be extremely valuable for your marketing. And on the other hand, with Google events, you can report on any type of interaction on your website, like how many times is that button clicked or how many people swipe to the end of that gallery, uh, basically anything you want to put to the test. But in order to use these events, you would need to place small JavaScript codes into your theme files. And that would be a little bit too in depth to cover right now. Okay, before we get into Google Ads, let's also briefly cover the Google Tag Manager. So what's the idea behind it? Let's say you're mainly using Shopify's pre-built in tracking solutions, uh, maybe a few custom events that you've added to your theme code. Then I would say you don't need the Google Tag Manager at all. However, the more tracking snippets you want to use that are not directly integrated with Shopify, like the Google AdWords remarketing tag, the Pinterest tag, or many custom events that you want to set up, the more code you will have to add to your theme files. As you can imagine, as long as it's only a few tracking snippets, this will all be manageable code-wise, let's say. But the more tracking snippets you add, the more complex your code gets. And from a certain point, you really want to use an external tag management system or an external code snippet management system if you want. And that's exactly what the Google Tag Manager is. The idea behind the Google Tag Manager is that you now only have one central code snippet in your theme files and all the other code snippets like the Pinterest tag or the Google Ads remarketing tag or all your custom events are then configured through this graphical user interface and they will get injected into your site automatically. So again, the Google Tag Manager is a system that helps you to organize all your tracking snippets in a graphical user interface so that you don't need to edit your theme files all the time whenever you want to make an adjustment or add a new tracking snippet. Now that all being said, there are also some limitations to the Google Tag Manager, especially regarding the Shopify checkout, unless you run your store on a Shopify Plus subscription. But it's a common question if someone should start using the Tag Manager or not. And I thought it would be a good idea to cover that here. Okay, finally, we get into the last but yet very important topic, which is Google Ads. As many of you know, Google Ads is a huge topic in and of itself. Uh, you can create so many different ads like text ads, display ads, video ads to show on YouTube, uh, Google Shopping ads. But regardless of which type of ad you want to use for your business, I think everyone would agree that whenever you spend money on advertising, you want the viewer of your ads to perform a certain action. Now, the only way to accurately tell whether you're spending your marketing budget effectively is to track the user while he's seeing your ad and while he's browsing your site after he has clicked on your ad. Therefore, you would need to have some sort of conversion tracking in place before you start running ads on any platform. That's the huge takeaway here. And the same holds true for Facebook ads, where you would need to install the Facebook pixel first. The same holds true for Pinterest ads, where you would need to install the Pinterest pixel first or the Pinterest tag. And the same holds true for Google ads, where you can decide if you want to use Google Analytics that we covered earlier in this video, or the Google AdWords remarketing tag, or a combination of both. Before we get into the difference of these, let me quickly show you how the setup works. Now, the easiest way to connect your Google Analytics account with your Google Ads platform is by navigating to the admin settings. And here you have a menu option for Google Ads linking. And then you can just add your Google Ads account right here. After you have connected these two, uh, you can go to tools and settings in your Google Ads account. And from the measurement menu, you could select conversions. 
Now here you can add a new conversion and this time we're gonna import it from our Google Analytics account. Continue. And now you can um, import all the goals that you set up in your Google Analytics account. And some of them are available per default, like the transactions. So this is a good one to get started with. So let's import that. And now you should already be able to optimize your campaigns for these new conversion goals. So let's demonstrate it really quick. Uh, so you go to a new campaign, let's do sales, search, continue. And in the budget and bidding section, you can go to show more settings and the conversion. We want to choose the conversion action for this campaign. And here you can select the transactions that we retrieve from our Google Analytics account. If you also want to start using the Google AdWords remarketing tag, you can do that by clicking on tools and then shared libraries, audience manager, audience sources. And here you can find the Google Ads tag. So let's click on details. And here you will find um, the section called text setup with installation instructions. Uh, so basically you would need to manually install that code into your theme files. And I will link an article describing the process in the video description. Or you could also use the Google Tag Manager. Because remember, the Google Tag Manager is a management system to help you organize all your tracking snippets. And the Google AdWords remarketing tag is just a tracking snippet. In order to get started, I would definitely recommend using Google Analytics as your conversion tracking first, because the setup is just easier. But I will provide you with further references regarding the difference between using Google Analytics and the Google AdWords remarketing tag as your conversion tracking. I will link these two comparisons in the video description, but I think this will only be interesting for advanced Google Ad users um, that are interested in building custom audiences or retargeting audiences based on the collected data. But now we're getting into an area of digital marketing where I as a developer can no longer give you advice confidently. My main focus is on understanding the technical side of things and maybe knowing enough to understand the client's requirements. Uh, but for anything else, you would be better off consulting with a marketer. All right, that was certainly a lot of information for a single video and it might take some time to process. As always, I hope you had fun watching and maybe you even learned something new. Usually I try to create searchable content, but this time the video is all over the place because I really wanted to give you a high level understanding of all the different things out there. And I would greatly appreciate if you leave a thumbs up just to help with the algorithm. If you want to receive more free value pieces, feel yourself invited to subscribe to the channel. I plan on posting small surprises and giveaways within the community tab of this channel. And the idea is to only do that sporadically and then leave them up for a few hours. So only people subscribed to the channel will be able to see them. Anyways, I hope you have a good day and then I'll see you in the next. Bye.